In this video, we're going to look at the ABD Modeler tool. This is the first tool in a suite of new products that we're adding under the Nerdio Advisor banner. And Nerdio Advisor will really be designed to provide proactive monitoring and recommendations to administrators to allow them to uh, right-size their environment to ensure that they're not incurring undue costs, and also uh, to ensure that the hosts and host pools are performing as required, um, and that the users have the resources that they need to perform their roles. Nerdio Advisor's AVD Modeler tool is the first of these, which we introduced in the 4.7 release, and which we've improved with the 4.8 release. An AVD modeler is really designed to allow administrators to model all aspects of a deployment, so multiple host pools, without the need to incur any actual Azure costs. This can be useful in situations where um, existing customers need to model out a potential new deployment for additional users and understand what the costs would look like associated with that new deployment, potentially tweak those costs before going on to deploy the pool. Or in greenfield scenarios where a customer is looking to understand what the best approach and most cost-effective approach would be to deliver desktops to their users, um, again, without the need to actually incur any costs. So they can model all aspects of the pools, uh, make changes to those models to understand the cost implications, um, and then once uh, they're comfortable with the model, they can move forward with the deployment. So from the AVD modeler page, then we can build our new models by clicking the add model button. Before we do that, I'm going to just demonstrate the global settings feature. This allows customers to set a global enterprise discount in the environment. So a CSP discount, if it exists, you can specify your percentage saving. We can also include our Nerdio Manager licensing costs, standard and premium, as well as our Nerdio Manager resource costs. And we can base those on a, a given size of the environment. We provide guidance on what those should be. So I'm gonna leave mine at uh, $7. And based on the recommendation, I'm gonna leave this a medium size Nerdio Manager uh, resource cost and click OK. And we have full tracking as to what has been changed in this environment. So who updated the modeler settings, when, um, and that includes if a model is modified. To add a model, we click the Add Model button, and you can see we have a number of steps that we need to pass through in order to uh, provide the output details. So I'm going to call this Sales Model. Same for the description. Move on to the next step. I'm going to call this sales pool dedicated. And I'm going to select the single user desktop personal option as this is going to be a dedicated pool. One of our objectives throughout this tool is to provide guidance to people who may not necessarily be very familiar with AVD and, and the functions associated with AVD. So we provide guidance in the form of um, text at the top of the page, and we're also providing guidance in the tool tips. So for desktop experience, for example, we provide a link to the Microsoft article, which provides information on the type of desktop experience that should be chosen in specific circumstances. I'm going to leave my host pool at 100 users and East US is fine. We can then select a workload type. And again, these are defined um, in the same way that Microsoft defines them. And if uh, more details are required on this, we provide a link to the guidance so that uh, the user doesn't have to go and search for this information. It's available at the click of a button from our console. So a medium workload equates to consultants and market researchers. I think that sounds appropriate for our sales environment. If we have reserved instances available for a specific VM size, these can be added at this point, um, either across one year or three years. Um, important to remember that if you are Ticking this box, you should uh, have a 
associated reserved instances for the specific VM size that you've selected. Associated with the workload type, we offer Microsoft recommended workload um, VM sizes for those workloads. So you can see if I move to heavy, there will be some different options there. In this instance, I will stick with the recommended V4 machine. We can specify a disk size. You'll see that the cost increments up on the left-hand side based on that change. And we're assuming uh, that our users will be wanting to take advantage of the Nerdio uh, stopped disk type function. We can select either a standard HDD or a standard SSD and it shows the cost savings associated with the different types. You can see a, a fair, fairly significant cost saving if we are converting our stopped disks to a standard HDD and only starting them um, as required by the users. So a useful cost saving benefit there. I'm happy with these settings. We'll move on to the next step. We can either choose a marketplace uncustomized image or a custom image. In this instance, I'll choose custom. And then we have to specify the servicing options. So how, how um, much servicing will be required against the image in a month, six hours seems appropriate, and the VM size for that servicing. This D2S V5 seems appropriate for that as well. So this is the, the running hours and the associated running cost to service an image for this pool. We can then specify our work hours. So standard work hours, 9 a.m. to, let's call this 6.30 p.m. And again, you see the cost incremented up there. If we know our absent user percentage, we can add this at this point as well. And this can be valuable, probably more so in shared host pool scenarios um, where you have a uh, large number of users in the pool and, and a fairly static absence percentage. It will help us to gauge how many hosts should be available in the environment uh, on a daily basis and therefore um, define the associated cost. So you see, if I, if I assume that 5% of my workers are um, absent, at any point, it makes a difference to the estimated costs. For this pool, I'll leave this at zero. And we can also specify that some users work outside of standard hours. <clears throat> In this instance, I'll say that 20% of our users do an average of an additional two hours per day. And again, you can see that that um, makes a difference to the associated costs because we're increasing the running time of these VMs. The next step is FSLogix. We won't be using FSLogix profiles in this environment because, or in this pool rather, because these are dedicated desktops. So we can move on to the next step. And the next step is the output, which provides us a full overview of the per user cost, both as a Nerdio optimized and unoptimized cost, and the Nerdio savings. We also provide all other relevant information, such as the compute cost, disk cost, um, custom image cost, etc., uh, so that you can have all of this information available to you um, when making a decision about deploying this pool. And if you want saved, if you uh, wish to make changes to this pool, for example, provide a smaller desktop size or um, a smaller number of users within the pool or make changes to the working hours, that will all aut uh, automatically update the costs um, and provide a, a revised summary, um, which you can then take into production. We can also add an additional host pool. So I'm going to call this um, shared. We can say that there will be 200 users in this pool. Again, East US is fine. And this is going to be a multi-user desktop pool. We'll have the compute requirements as lights. We'll go for a marketplace uncustomized image. So we'll just use the default marketplace image to uh, serve desktops out to our users. Standard working hours is fine, but we can assume, um, because this is a shared pool for more users, we can assume maybe that 5% uh, of our users are absent on a daily basis. And again, you can see this increments down the cost. It's a small difference, but it helps to provide um, a more accurate cost if you have um, 
reliable figures for this information available in your environment. We're going to use FS Logix. We can choose bet between multiple different uh, storage options, NetApp or Azure Files. It's a range of types, and obviously the costs will increment based on that. And we specify a default profile size of 30 gigabytes, because that's the, the standard, that's the maximum recommended um, for uh, deployments. Um, sorry, that's the standard that's recommended for deployments. Um, but you can make changes to this. So if you wanted to have a 20 gigabyte user profile as your maximum, it's going to make quite a difference to your storage cost for a live environment, as you can see. 30, 20 is a few hundred dollars a month, which is you know, a reasonable saving. And again, we can see the summary of the costs associated with the environment. Um, including the total host pool cost, the per user cost, and all the other associated costs. If we then move back to the global model level, we will get a high level summary of the total costs for the modeled environment. So this would be um, a, an average of both host pools, um, which can be a, a, a useful kind of headline metric. We can make changes to the model name and description if required. You can then save and close it. You can see that I've created or updated the model, my user, when this was done. And we can see that these details are available. If we wish to make changes to an individual pool, we can click one of these uh, icons. So if we had multiple pools in a, in a model, we could quickly move to those. Or to get back to the model level to perform editing, we can click on the name of the model or into the edit section. If we want to make changes to it, to, or we want to test out changes rather to this model, um, but we don't want to lose what we have in there currently, we can clone this model and we can also export this model. If, um, for example, you have multiple environments or you're a par partner designing this for your customers, you can export and import these models via the import tool. We think this is a really useful tool. We've had some great feedback on this. Please continue to provide feedback. Um, we'd love to improve this in future, including offering the ability for customers to deploy uh, host pools directly from this tool. Thank you for your time.